guys what's up so in today's session we are going to talk about javascript engines and how it works so these are the areas we are going to cover in this session so javascript and javascript runtime environments what is javascript engine how js engine works git compilation memory management and v8 engine so in today's world, we can run JavaScript almost at anywhere, in, in our mobile phones, in our laptops, and e even in our smartwatches. To run JavaScript on those platforms, we need, we need JavaScript runtime environment. So what is JavaScript runtime environment? A runtime environment is where our program will be executed. It determines what global objects our program can access and it can also impact how it runs. So JavaScript runtime is just like a box or a container, including all the things that we need to use JavaScript. And to the heart of any JavaScript runtime is always a JavaScript engine. So there are two mostly used JavaScript runtime environments. One is a browser environment and the other is node environment. In a browser, JavaScript environment, it has the following elements. The JavaScript engine, web APIs, the callback queue, and the event loop. We'll look into this more in upcoming slides. So what is Node Runtime Environment? In 2009, the Node Runtime Environment was created for the purpose of executing JavaScript code, JavaScript code without a browser. So this enables programmers to run JavaScript in server side in the backend. So what is JavaScript engines? The first JavaScript engine was created by Brendan Eich in 1995 for the Netscape Navigator web browser. Initially, it was an interpreter for the Netscape lang nascent language Eich invented. After this, that, this in evolved into the SpiderMonkey engine that used by the Firefox browser to the date. So what is JavaScript engine? So when we write our codes in JavaScript files, it's not understandable by our computers. Because as we know, our computers only understand the machine language, right? So this is where we need JavaScript engines. Basically, JavaScript engine is where the magic happens. It takes our source code that we write and turns into an executable machine code that either runs on our browser in Node.js in the backend. If we have any JavaScript source code and we run it, it is always the engine that runs it for us. It doesn't matter if we run it in the browser or in Node.js or an IoT device. To grow from something we write to execute it, executing that that's what the engines are doing so the javascript engines are the heart of everything that we do the first javascript engines were mere interpreters but all relevant modern engines are just in time compilation for improved performance javascript engines are typically developed by web browser vendors as we know chrome and firefox and every major browser has one in a browser the JavaScript engine runs in concern with the rendering engine via the document object model. The use of JavaScript engine is not limited to browsers. For example, the V8 engine is a core component of the Node.js and Dino runtime system. So these are the different JavaScript engines used by different browsers. The most known one is the Chrome's V8 engine and Firefox SpiderMonkey. So let's see how JavaScript engine works. So in JavaScript architecture, simply there are three main things happening. First, the code, the code we write goes to parser and then get compiles and execution, executed. So in next slide, let's see how it happens. So in the parsing phase, our JavaScript code broken down into tokens. For, for example, if we write a simple code like let a equals 10, this splits into token like this. 
and then and next there is a syntax parser job of the syntax parser is take the code and convert into the ast which is abstract syntax tree so after generating the tokens the next task is to make the ast or the abstract syntax tree and ast is a tree which generated by tokens for this piece of code the ast will look like this let's see how abstract syntax tree works with the example so this is a piece of code and this is the ast that generate for it so this is basically the head of head of the ast tree and then we have a declaration inside it so the, this declaration kind of have a name which is our company name which is this and a value which is cabbage apps which is this and as you can see this is just a syntax tree for just one line of code imagine thousand lines of code how the syntax tree would look like next we have just in time compiler but before that let's see what interpreters and compiler is so with an interpreter translation happens pretty much line by line on the fly interpreters are quick to get up and running you don't have to go through that whole compilation step before you can start running your code you just start translating that first line and run it because of this that interpreter seems like a natural fit for something like javascript it's important for a web developer to be able to get going and run their code quickly and that's why browsers use javascript interpreters in the beginning so a compiler on the other hand doesn't translate on the fly it works ahead of time to create that translation and write it down such as c where the compilation is done ahead of time it takes a little bit more time to start up because it has go through the compilation step at the beginning but then code in loops run faster because it doesn't need to repeat the translation for each pass through that loop another difference is that the compiler has more time to look at the code and make edits to it so that it will run faster these edits are called optimization the interpreter is doing its work during runtime, so it can't take much time during the translation phase to figure out this optimization. Now let's see what just-in-time compilation is. Uh, so for this, I'll hand over to Shibli to continue the session. Just-in-time compilation. So when you're going through just-in-time compilation, JavaScript engines are designed uh levering best of the both approaches and develop the just-in-time compilation model javascript may be described as both compile and interpreted language but actually implemented differs for each of the engines so uh basically the just-in-time compilation is a combination of uh, interpreters and compilers so uh not like C++, like uh, low level languages, this is a high level language. So that's why it becomes a high level language because it's using the both base. So JIT compilation attempts to use the benefit of both while the interpreter program is being run. The JIT compiler determines the most frequently used code and compiles it into machine code. Depending on the compiler, this can be done on a method or smaller section of code so uh, even though uh, javascript is implemented in different ways by different browsers however the basic concept remains same so in modern javascript engines we have an added feature called monitor or else uh, the provider so this monitor watches the code as it runs and make a note uh, of how many times it runs and uh, what types are used so uh, when a code is running initially what will happen is uh, the monitor will look for the code uh, at the beginning and uh, it sees what's happening inside at first the monitor 
interpreter just runs everything through the interpreter and uh, it watches what happens every in the beginning and uh, if the same line of codes are running few times that segment of code is called worm which means the money the monitor will recognize it as a worm a function or else uh, a method so if it is running a lot more than two three times if it is running thousand times around it will recognize it as a hot function so if the monitor recognize it has a hot uh, a worm function uh, basically it will uh, take it to the baseline compiler so what the baseline compiler do is uh, when a function starts getting worm the it will send it off to be compiled and then uh, it will store that compilation so for example if we take this function uh, the each line of the function is compiled to a thing called stub the stubs are indexed by line number and the variable types uh, so if the monitor sees that execution is hitting the same code with the same variable types uh, without changing those types then it will just pull out its compilation compiled version so it the code will be more faster there and uh, we have the optimized compile optimizing compiler which means uh, if the monitor recognize a code uh, as a hot code so what will it do is uh, the monitor will send it off to the optimizing compiler this will create another even faster version of the function that will also be stored so in order to make a faster version of the code the optimizing has to uh, make some assumptions so uh, the optimizing compiler will make some assumptions uh, previously so those are will be uh, that all objects created by a particular constructor have the same shape which means uh, when it's running again the sh shape of that object will not change and uh, the same property name and those properties were added in the same order so the order and the names cannot be changed uh, that is the assumption that uh, optimizing compiler do and uh, optimizing compiler uses the information the monitor has gathered by watching code execution to make these uh, judgments if some of something has been true for all previous passes through a loop it assumes it will continue to be true and uh, we have another thing called uh, de-optimization or else the bailing out so uh, think that uh, the monitor has sent some code for the uh, optimizer so it has optimized a code and uh, because the javascript is dynamically typed language uh, we cannot guarantee what uh, type will be sent into the uh, function or what will be assigned after for a variable so uh, previously uh, the optimized compiler made some assumptions that the types which are coming in will be same but if it is breaking out if we are uh, assigning a number or something a different type for a variable so what will happen is uh, de-optimization will happen for that particular code uh, so this will be a little bit of costly thing that will happen even though this is a uh, good thing that we can from our end as developers we can change the variable types but uh, it is a not good option for the compilers so the compile code need to check before it runs to see whether the assumptions are valid if they are then the compiled code runs but if not the git uh, assumes that it made the wrong assumption and trashes the optimized code so that's what i said so uh, it will trash the optimized code which it has done earlier the execution goes back to the interpreter and based on compiled version this process is called the optimization uh, usually optimizing compilers make code faster but sometimes they can uh, cause unexpected performance problem if you have code that keeps getting optimized and then de-optimized uh, it ends up 
being slower than just executing the baseline compiled version. So uh, optimizing, if we are keep changing the variables uh, type continuously, uh, the optimizer need to de-optimize and uh, optimize again. So this process will make the execution slow. So most of the browsers have added limit to the breakout of this optimizing, optimizing de-optimization cycle. Uh, when they happen, uh, if the JIT has made more than, say, just for example, 10 attempts uh, at optimizing and keeps moving to throw it out, uh, it will just stop trying. It will not uh, optimize it again if the type is get changed more than 10 times. So uh, we let's look at an example. Uh, so there are a lot of kind of optimizations happening but uh, we let's take a look at one type so we can get a feel how the optimization happens so uh, we let's do uh, look at the type uh, specialization here here we have a function called uh, array sum which gives an array as a argument and uh, we have a variable called sum zero and we have a loop and uh, it's based on the array length and uh, the summary sum will get what else the element which has on the array so when we are looking at this uh, function the thing is uh, not like in low level languages normally if we are using c plus plus or something we normally define what this variable is but in javascript we don't do that even though we see this is like a very simple function but in compilers view it's not an easy thing because it need to find what the array is, is that actually an array and uh, if we took the look at the sum variable here it doesn't know what what it is refer for whether it's a integer or a string or an array or nothing else and even here in the for loop we have an variable which this one is also not defined what type it is so uh, this is a little bit of costly thing in uh, view of the compiler so if we look at the uh, diagram what kind of questions that uh, uh, compilers ask so uh, in first it looks whether sum is an integer before so we it need to understand whether this is an integer or not and uh, again it need to check the array which we are sending in is actually an array which one this one so we need to check whether this one is an actual array and after that it need to check is i an integer the i which is inside the for loop what we are defining here whether this is an actual integer and next it need to find out because we are doing a uh, concatenation here it need to find out whether uh, the element inside the array whether it's an integer or not so there are so many uh, things that compiler need to do uh, before it execute this code so uh, as we have uh, loops inside the for loop inside the function uh, when it goes through the loop it need to ask the same question again and again uh, so because each line of code has its own set of stubs in the baseline compiler the JIT needs to keep checking the types each time and line of code is executed so for each iteration through the loop it will has to have to ask the same questions so uh, the code would execute a lot faster if the JIT didn't need to repeat those checks. And that's one of the thing the optimization compiler does. In the optimizing compiler, the whole function is compiled together. The type checks are moved, so they happen before the loop. So the questions which are asked inside the loop can be reduced by the compile, optimizing compiler, which uh, it will ask the question first and it will compile uh, optimize the stuff so the questions we have to ask through the iteration will be get reduced so how can we 
take an advantage of the git uh, the main thing what we can do is uh, we don't change the object shape so we can change the object shape of object by uh, dynamically adding new properties and values this is great as js allow it but at the same time because we are changing things around the compiler is at a loss so uh, when we are using changing a value or a something else on an object or something if we are using the same type it will be easier to op the optimization optimizer to uh, run the code rather than keeping de-optimized and stuff and uh, we let's take for example a function uh, the more you change the type of the attributes you use to call your function the more complex the function become in the eyes of the compiler so for example we have the function here which is your function which takes two parameters so here in the first uh, function when we are calling we are sending the sending an integer as values and uh, so it will get optimized and the second time we are sending string as values so this is not good in eyes of the compiler because it has to optimize and de-optimize stuff so the better the best thing what we can do for run the code fast is to send the same types uh, as arguments for these functions and uh, that's about uh, the JIT compilation so we can move to the memory management uh, which is used by js engines uh, low level languages like uh, c and c plus plus requires to allocate and free up memory manually this is make them more difficult to work with so uh, in c and c plus plus when we are creating a variable or integer we need to define what the type actually but uh, in javascript we don't do that uh, high level languages like javascript python and c sharp automatically allocates memory when objects are created and frees it when they are not used anymore so uh, we have some methods to store uh, memory in javascript so uh, when it creates stuff it doesn't know how big it's gonna be so that's what it says here so to reduce the memory problem there uh, the this uh, javascript has a feature called a job garbage collection so it will find out the things that are not necessary to be on the memory and it those are will be removed from the memory uh, when it those are not used we look into it in next slides so uh, when we are talking about the storage there are uh, we need to uh, identify there are two main types in javascript one is primitive type and the reference type so in primitive types uh, we have strings numbers null uh, undefined symbols and begin which are seven types and these types are stored directly on the stack which we have so in the previous uh, tech talk uh, inside the stack itself it will uh, store the values which are primitive types and uh, if it is a reference type like array function or as an object uh, that type of things will be stored in the heap so a uh, referent it will be uh, the name variable will be there and it will be reference for a place in the heap uh, so we let's look at an example uh we have here we have the variable called name equals john so this is an, a primitive type so it will take to the stack and may keep the name as john and secondly we have a, a primitive type again which is aged which is equal to 30 so it will take to the stack and put it to the age 30 and next we have a primitive type so what it will be do is uh, the person variable variable will be here but the values will be stored in the heap and the stack will be a reference for a uh, 
location in the heap so it won't keep the value here the value will be on the heap and it will be referenced by the stack so uh, this behavior a uh, little bit makes a little bit different when we are working with primitives and objectives objects so uh, for example let's take uh, we have the same scenario here the name equals john the age is 30 both are in the stack and the person the object is in the heap so it's referring for the object here in the heap and uh, what we are doing is we making a new variable called new name and assigning the name here which is john so it will get assigned there and uh, next we are assigning a new value for new name for this variable called jonathan so what will happen is the stacks uh, stored value will get changed on here and uh, we are doing the same thing for the object now uh, we are calling creating a new variable called new person and assigning the person which is the object here but the thing is uh, when we are assigning uh, the person here it's not assigned like the primitive type what it will do is it will refer for the same place in the heap it won't copy the stuff again it will refer for the same place and uh, the different thing what gonna happen is for example if we are changing the new person dot name here for bradley actually what's gonna happen is the name inside the heap which are referencing this will be changed so uh, even though if we don't have intention to change the name on this person it gets changed because the reference is for the same place bradley so uh, we will see this on an example yep. okay uh, we let's define a variable let john and uh, is an primitive type and we have a check person and uh, we let's create another variable called name and uh, we give a new value for the new name so what will happen is uh, as i previously explained uh, this will go to the stack and uh, this person thing will go to the heap and uh, when i assigning new name for the new name variable uh, the new name will go to the stack with this value and uh, now again we are changing the new value uh, variables value to testing one so now if we console log the name will not get changed because uh, the stack where the new name and the name are kept is different so there is no any uh, issues when we are changing this name but if we try to change let's create a new person Now we are referencing for the same place. Now new person is referring for the person in the heap for the same place. And now if we change up name, equal 
let's unlock the person now we have a problem here because our intention is not to change uh, the person's name but uh, when we are changing the new person's name here because of the same reference the value get changed here so uh, this is a problem because we are uh, using the heap uh, so there are some uh, ways that we can overcome this issue uh, anyone else want you to say whether they what are the ways that we can overcome this and if you use cons you can't reassign right yeah we cannot reassign uh, but uh, now our, what we need to do is uh, we need to change the name of this person so uh, without uh, using the same reference how can we create a new variable kind of thing where i can change the name like this but nothing will happen for the first person you can clone it right yeah so uh, what is the way that i can create the new object is it object dot clone or something i don't know <laughs> yeah uh, there is a easy way that we can use you can use an operator right? right yeah you sorry yeah the spread, spread operator yeah. the spread yeah. operator is the easiest way that we can uh, do this one so let's do So by doing this, uh, it will create a new uh, heap on uh, reference point for the uh, new person. And uh, these both are now referring for, referring for two different places. So uh, even though if we change something else in here, uh, in the new person stuff, it won't affect the person. So uh, spread operator is, one of the way that we can uh, use this one and uh, we have another way called uh, object dot assign so if we use that method also we can uh, do the same stuff and uh, when we are doing this even though we uh, using the spread operator and uh, create a new uh, reference uh, there is one more small problem which occurs if we are using another object type inside this object for example let's say uh what let's take uh okay it's object okay. so uh this is an another object inside this object so these are primitive types now this goes as a object again so now we let's try to uh, now we are doing the same stuff here new person and we are using the spread operator and creating a one now we expect that if we change anything else here uh, nothing will happen for the person right so now let's try to change location locations and now if we look at the person stuff even though we change in the new person the person's value got changed here as 10 it need we expect it to be one but it changes 10 uh, it happens because uh we call it as a shallow copy when we are using the 
a spread operator it doesn't do a deep copy deep copy means uh if an object has an object inside it it won't get copied this will be a reference yet even though this these things are get copied this is still uh, waits as a reference so when we are doing a, a spread operator thing it's still reference for the same place when we are use uh, changing the location still the person stuff get changed so this will be happen on the spread operator and if, even though if we use the object dot assign thing this will continue so there is one way that i found that we can overcome this stuff uh, anyone else who can answer that we Any can way? use yeah load as is deep load or clone deep function right that works every time yeah uh, we can use that and uh, if need we can use the json of past stuff so uh, by that uh, it will make a deep copy uh, let me show that to you. by uh, using this way uh, if we look at the person the person's uh, value is not changed because uh, this way it makes a deep copy uh, it's not a, it's not making a shallow copy so because of the deep copy all the stuff get copied and uh, even though we change the new person stuff uh, the person's thing will not get changed in any moment so uh, that's about the memories memory management on the javascript engine so let's go for the next slide so uh, the v8 engine is the mostly used uh, engine uh, uh, when we are working because it's more faster than other engines so uh, we let's see how v8 engine works uh, v8 is written in c++ and uh, can run standalone or be ad embedded into c++ app uh, the first optimizing compiler of v8 was uh, code gen and uh, newest and the more advanced is uh, features turbo fan its backend is used by the v8's low level register register based interpreter called uh, ignition uh, this combined uh, ignition and turbo fan pipeline was launched in 2017 so uh, this is how it works in the past uh, in javascript the javascript source code will come into the parser and uh, it will make the abstract syntax tree and uh, it will go through the interpreter uh, called ignition and uh, make the bytecode and uh, there's the compiler uh, called turbofan and it make the optimized machine codes and uh, from v8 there's a new feature which they have built uh recently called uh, spark plug which is uh in between the interpreter the ignition and the turbo fan so this is the new feature that they are uh giving the they have introduced uh this compiler for the v8 engine uh in 2019 i guess and uh, this is between the ignition bytecode interpreter and the turbofan optimized compiler uh, the speciality they have mentioned it is the compiler directly to machine code via the single linear pass over the bytecode so this is the new feature of v8 engine 
so uh, you can find more details about that on the v8 dev blogs post so uh, it this uh, feature makes more fast the compilation process so that's it guys about the js engine uh any questions um i think um am i audible right yeah. yeah. Um, I think you mentioned that uh, you know early days V8 engine used a component called you know full code gen. Uh, and is you mentioned it is an optimization optimizing compiler. Um, but actually that should be an error because uh, full code gen was actually a baseline compiler early days. So the optimizing compiler was actually the crankshaft. It was not uh, clear for me. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so uh, early days, you know, VJ actually used a uh, crankshaft as their yeah, optimizing compiler, not the full gen, full code gen compiler. Full code gen compiler was a baseline compiler. Thanks for joining guys and have a nice day.